Attention, the following broadcast has been approved by Outcasted OC. Viewer discretion is advised. Incoming transmission in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Outcasted OC covering NXT again for you this week. Apologies for the late upload, it's just been a very busy day and not really had time to check out NXT up until very recently but we're going to get into everything that happened but before we do make sure you like the video thumbs it up you know hit the bell so you never miss a video all that good stuff but anyway oh yeah and subscribe oh yeah that that's probably the first thing I should have said <laughs> anyway let's get straight into it we have the NXT champion Ethan Page opening the show what does he say? Well, he's pretty much just bragging about how great he is. It's not just NXT anymore. In fact, it isn't NXT anymore. It's NX me. He said that no one can touch him for the championship. He's going to drop everyone who comes for him. That includes Pete Dunne. That includes Wesley. That includes Trick Williams if he manages to figure out Pete Dunne at some point. But guess who appears? You didn't even have to say his name this time. Joe Hendry comes out and says he is here to stay and he is coming for that NXT championship. Uh, Ethan Page calls him a flash in the pan and he is on his 14 minute, uh, 14th minute of his 15 minutes of fame. Joe Hendry says he may be hot right now, but he's been grinding for over 10 years. He isn't just a flash in the pan. He's going to show everyone why you should believe in Joe Hendry. And he starts singing his song. Ethan Page gets pretty angry about it. He doesn't want to hear it, so he gets out the ring. So while Joe Hendry is like, you know, waving his hands from side to side because, you know, he wants to take the championship to London, Paris, and Tokyo. Uh, where are met them other places? Um, there's America, Scotland, Canada, and Mexico. I think I think those are the other places. While he's telling us all that, he gets hit in the back by none other than a freshly turned heel Wes Lee you dirty dog Wes Lee attacking Joe Hendry from behind so let's stay on the story of Wes Lee, uh, Wes Lee he attacked the rest of the rascals last week so he's officially turned heel not sure why this happened to be honest with you maybe TNA needed the, uh, the other members of the rascals back um, you know for a couple of dates who knows but it makes Wes Lee even more interesting and we find that out later on tonight We'll talk about the promo right now. Wesley is talking about how, you know, everyone was wondering what was going to happen when Zachary left the company. You know, it was Wesley going to find another tag team partner? No, um, it wasn't going to be labelled as just a tag team guy. He broke his back, literally making him the most important, the greatest North American champion of all time. And he is fighting his way to the top. He's, nothing is stopping him from getting to his main goal. So it, when apparently... I didn't know this. Has this just been announced on this show? I don't know. Apparently, he's going to be facing Zach at um, NXT in a couple of weeks. NXT No Mercy. And he's going to send him back into TNA, apparently. He said, you can go on, you know, with the rest of the Rascals. You, 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 you and, you and um, Trey Miguel can go and be the Rascals and have a great career in TNA. While Wesley... WWE Superstar is going to go on to the NXT Championship. He is interrupted by Pete Dunne. And Pete Dunne is very impressed with Wesley. Pete Dunne says, wow, someone's actually finally figuring it out. But it doesn't matter. Because no one's going to stop me. No one's going to get in my way heading towards the NXT Championship. I, de I defeated Trick Williams last week. So it's my time to go after the NXT Championship. They are both interrupted by the music of none other again than Joe Hendry, uh, they both look to the ramp, you know, it's to say his name and he'll appear. No, he say his name and he appears from behind and attacks both Pete Dunne and Wesley. These guys all get into a massive brawl and it is broken up. We find out that next week we're going to be having a triple threat number one contenders match for the NXT Championship. Pete Dunne versus Wesley versus Joe Hendry. The winner goes on to NXT No Mercy to challenge Ethan Page for the title. I cannot wait for that match. Who do I think is going to win? It's got to be Joe Hendry, right? Surely. He says he's going to be sticking around NXT for a while. Why not make him go for the NXT Championship? I say you go all the way with Mr. Joe Hendry. Pete Dunne's already doing his stuff on the main roster, so I don't really see the need in him holding the NXT Championship. I think it's going to be a toss-up between Joe Hendry and Wesley to win this match. Speaking of the main titles on NXT this week, let me just sort my camera out because I can see it and it's really annoying me that I'm not, you know, on, on, on screen properly. Sorry, guys. That was very unprofessional. Um, 
Speaking of the main titles, wait, let's talk about the NXT Women's Championship. We're going to have a No Mercy gauntlet next week to confirm who Roxanne Perez is going to be facing at NXT No Mercy for the NXT Women's Championship. Uh, this gauntlet is going to con uh, consist of people who have never had an opportunity to challenge for the Women's Championship. So uh, we kind of like a Royal Rumble, like, you know, spin the, the case thing and pick out names. Um, Stevie Turner takes... Uh, it takes credit for the whole idea, even though we know it was Robert Stone last week who came up with it. Uh, the people who are going to be getting the um, gauntlet um, opportunity is none other than, than Ren Sinclair is the first name to come out. Then we get Adriana Rizzo, a random name, but okay, I'm, I'm down with Rizzo getting a championship match. She doesn't know that yet because she is out with uh, Tony D for the Heritage Cup match. We'll talk about that match in just a second. One of three championship matches on NXT this week that we're going to be talking about. Um, the next one is Jada Parker. Jada Parker. Jada Parker. I think she might be the winner of this gauntlet. But anyway, let's move on. We're going to be getting also Sol Ruka, who is going to be uh, challenging for the NXT Championship if she wins this gauntlet match. I wouldn't mind seeing that match either. We get Carmen Petrovic and Kendall Gray. So we're getting a couple of new faces in the gauntlet next week. It's going to be interesting to see, but I do think it's going to be a mix between either Jada Parker or Sol Ruka. I think those are the perfect people to win that match. Let's talk about the NXT Women's North American Championship scene for now. So we get the fact that Tate and Paxley had an opportunity last week for the North American Championship. She's very upset backstage. Uh, Kalani Jordan doesn't know what to do. She kind of feels a little bit bad. Lola Vice walks up to Tate and Paxley and basically tells her, you know, it'll get better. Calm down. Don't worry about it. Tatum says it's okay for you to say it because you're popular and everything's been handed to you on a silver platter. Lola Vice takes offense at this and says, I don't know where you're going with this, but you better watch what you're saying. This sets up a match this week that bear between them two. Don't really need to talk about it, to be honest with you, because nothing really happens in this match. Um, Lola Vice wins with a spinning back fist for the 1-2-3. However, on commentary, Kalani Jordan is there and she gets attacked from behind by Wendy Chu. So I believe that is the real story heading into the next couple of weeks. We're probably going to be getting a match between Kalani Jordan and Wendy Chu for the NXT Women's North American Championship. But where does Lola Vice go from here? We'll have to see. Let me know in the comments what you think Lola Vice is going to be doing over the next couple of months because her... Her time in NXT is kind of like up in the air at the moment. I'm not even sure if she should be there anymore. I would put her on the main roster. I think she's more than ready for it. I think she's got the charisma. I think she's got the Kavorka. I think she's got the in-ring skills to make it either on Raw or SmackDown. And I do think she'd become a true star on either of those brands. While on the subject of North American Championships, we might as well talk about the Men's North American Championship, Otis accepted the open challenge that Obafemi put out last week. We saw it on Monday Night Raw that he was going to be the one challenging for the North American Championship. And what a match this was. As Booker T would say and did say, no bread, no water, just meat. These two were absolutely beating the piss out of each other. And this match went on for a lot longer than I thought it was going to be, to be honest with you. Um, Otis putting in a really, really good shift here. Obafemi trying to find it, you know, trying to find a way to beat the big dozer, trying to find a way to match his power. Obafemi usually doesn't have that kind of problem in the ring. He's usually the powerhouse in the ring, but Otis really brings that strength to the ring as well. So Obafemi really had to find another way to beat him in this match. And he eventually does, hitting a very impressive power bomb on. Onto Otis for the one, two, three. Obafemi is your North American champion still. Where do we go with Obafemi from here? Where does Otis go from here? Well, he goes back to Monday Night Raw. But Otis looking a bit different this week. Wearing the darker colours, new Alpha Academy, you know. I'm, I'm liking it. I'm, I'm liking how Otis uh, looked this week. But this was a really, really good match. One of the best matches on NXT this week, in my opinion. While we're talking about championship matches, let's go on to the NXT Heritage Cup match. In my mind, the best match from this week. We've got the champion Tony D'Angelo taking on Charlie Dempsey of the No Quarter Catch crew. Charlie got this opportunity because Ren Sinclair won her match last week, earning him a title opportunity, and she is in the NQCC also. 
Um, this match is a roller coaster. I don't know how else to say it. Uh, Tony D picking up the first four with a forget about it, but the first round is very, very technical between him and Charlie Dempsey, showing off the wrestling skills, showing off their technicality in that ring, telling you that they can both go. They've both got collegiate backgrounds in grappling, in the amateur graps, in the wrestling. Um, like I say, Tony D picking up the first fall. Charlie Dempsey really looks kind of out of it for the first couple of rounds. But Ren Sinclair slaps him in the face and says, get back in the game. Charlie Dempsey is able to hit a butterfly pin in the fourth round, evening it up for Charlie Dempsey. However, it gets a little bit more interesting in the fifth round as Charlie Dempsey manages once again, thanks for the distraction from Ren Sinclair, for another one, two, three. This means we do have a new NXT Heritage Cup champion, Charlie Dempsey, once again, one of the only people to hold that Heritage Cup more than once. Tony D'Angelo looks very despondent backstage. He says it was a setback, you know, it was a setback for the D'Angelo family. At least Rizzo has an opportunity in the gauntlet match next week, but as for him, he doesn't know what's next. Um, this takes place after, uh, sorry, before the North American Championship match, but Obafemi actually does um, interrupt him and walk past him kind of like how Tony D'Angelo did for him last week so I have a feeling there's going to be a rivalry coming up in the next couple of weeks between Tony D'Angelo of the D'Angelo family and Obafemi I have a feeling that is your next North American Championship picture um, I wouldn't mind seeing it would I mind Tony D'Angelo beating Obafemi no, I don't I don't think it's the right person. I think Obafemi should hold this championship for a little bit longer, maybe even heading into 2025. I think we all would like to see that. And if you don't want to see that, let's have a conversation about it in the comments. Um let's go on to the main event. Oh, in fact, no, let's not actually. Let's Oh boy. Oh boy. Let's just talk about something else for a moment, okay? Eddie Thorpe and Lexus King. I was thinking about not talking about this match or just this whole situation in my opinion because this is such a oh god it's such a bad rivalry the, the most annoying part is i actually agree with lexus king lexus king is a rock and roll guy eddie thorpe is an edm guy eddie thorpe says he's going to be breaking all the stereotypes of what it means to be a native american which is cool i'm down for that hell yeah you know eddie thorpe you go you go girl edm not for me a little bit of rock and roll. So I didn't mind that Lexus King hit the coronation for the one, two, three on Eddie Thorpe this week. But it's just a stupid rivalry. Like Lexus King, you know, injuring Eddie Thorpe's hands so he couldn't hit the DJ sets. Uh, Eddie Thorpe hates Lexus King because he likes rock and roll. I don't know. I, I don't I don't know. I don't care. If anyone does care, then fair enough, but this isn't the this isn't the review for you if you care about Lexus King versus Eddie Thorpe, okay? <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the main event. We got the NXT Tag Team Championships on the line. The champions, Axiom and Nathan Fraser, taking on Andre Chase University, Andre Chase and Ridge Holland. Um, now, it's either this or the Heritage Cup match, uh, Heritage Cup match, which is the match of the week for me. Um, unbelievable athleticism from Axiom and Nathan Fraser, and this was really the problem for Chase U throughout this match. They were trying to match the speed, uh, they were trying to neutralise the speed, also of Axiom and Nathan Fraser. Um, really, really intense match. Great match. Rich Holland bringing another kind of dynamic, um, kind of like how Duke Hudson does when he teams up with Andrew Chase. He really brings the power and the velocity when it comes to catching these small guys and just throwing them around the ring. It's really nice to see. Um, this match comes to a head, however, when um, Axiom and Nathan Fraser are setting up the finishing move that they that they have like retained the title so well, and they have you know they've brought them so much success. Axiom hits a Spanish fly on two. Um, Ridge Holland, he drags him in position for the Phoenix Splash, but before he's able to hit it, Andre Chase hits Nathan Fraser off of the top rope, he slams into the announce table, so he's out for the count. Axiom hits the golden ratio onto Andre Chase, but this distracts him just enough to turn around into a big spear from Ridge Holland, finishing move, whatever the hell it's called. One, two, three! New NXT Tag Team Champions, Andre Chase University. I was incredibly happy with this. I couldn't believe it. Duke Hudson and Riley Osborne. I'm not sure how they feel about it, but Andre Chase University has gold once again, and that is a tag team gold. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy about it. I was absolutely buzzing. Rich Holland and Andre Chase are your new NXT tag 
team champions. What did you th guys think of this match? Let me know in the comments. And also, what did you guys think of NXT this week? It, I thought it was a really, really good show. It was a solid show. Monday Night Raw was amazing this week. I absolutely loved it. And I think this also carried on the great week that WWE is having. Um, speaking of Monday Night Raw... Make sure you go check out Courtney's review from yesterday. It was a really good watch. It's doing really well on the channel. I appreciate it. Channel is doing really well in general. I appreciate that. Go follow us on our other social medias, X slash Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at OutcastedOC. If you like this video, like again, like I said again, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you never miss a video. Check out Quiz Night tomorrow on Outcasted. I am going to be hosting a quiz. I'm going to be asking the Outcasted boys and girls all the questions let's see who comes out on top it's the start of a four-part series that we're going to be putting on once a month who's going to be coming out with the most right answers it's going to be interesting to see what happens there and make sure you stay tuned for saturday morning because you're going to be getting the smackdown review from either g or ross but for now guys i hope you had a great wednesday i hope you watched nxt and i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you enjoyed this video it was great to bring it to you peace out